This video introduces you to the process of conducting contextual research of a text in order to support a contextual literary analysis of the play Maple and Vine by Jordan Harrison. As EKU students, you have access to nearly 300 databases through EKU libraries. With that many choices, it can be hard to decide where to start. For reasons we'll address as we go along, we'll start with the database Academic Search Ultimate which you can find linked under the Research Resources column on the EKU Libraries homepage. When you click on the Academic Search Ultimate link, you are prompted to log in using your full EKU email address and the password you use for email and Blackboard. We recommend you select the option to stay logged in. Doing so will ensure you remain logged in as you move between EKU Libraries resources, so long as you continue using the same browser and don't close your browser during your research session. You'll notice that Academic Search Ultimate looks very similar to some of the other databases you might have used while at EKU, including the MLA International Bibliography Database reviewed earlier in this library module. That's because Academic Search Ultimate is one of several databases EKU Libraries purchases from a vendor called EBSCOhost. Academic Search Ultimate is a great place to get started with your research for two main reasons. One, it's a broad, multidisciplinary database and includes information from nearly every discipline you might need for a contextual research approach. And two, it's an EBSCOhost database which means that you can actually add additional EBSCOhost databases to your search once you're in Academic Search Ultimate. Above the search boxes, you'll see that we are currently set up to search Academic Search Ultimate only. However, if we click on Choose Databases, we see a list of all available EBSCOhost databases that we can add to our search, many of which could be useful in completing the research for your contextual literary analysis assignment. For example, Race Relations Abstracts, which addresses topics within race relations, discrimination, and immigration studies, and Sociological Collection, which addresses topics related to social behavior, human tendencies, interaction, relationships, community development, culture, and social structure, are likely to contain resources relevant to several possible contextual approaches to Maple and Vine. Given this, we're actually going to search across all of the EBSCOhost databases by selecting the checkbox next to Select All and then clicking on OK. It might be tempting to start researching by looking for articles about Jordan Harrison's Maple and Vine. However, doing so will likely give you mostly reviews of Harrison's play in its various theatrical productions. While reading reviews of Harrison's is a great way to inform your understanding and is recommended, such reviews are not the type of resources you need to complete a contextual literary analysis. For a contextual literary analysis, you need to examine a text's themes, characters, settings, time period, etc. in order to establish a deeper understanding of what the text is trying to communicate to its audience. To do this, You'll conduct research on the text's unique themes or aspects, rather than on the text itself. In the case of Maple and Vine, we have a lot to choose from. Please note this list is not exhaustive, and your approach might not be listed. Racial prejudice, discrimination, and or bias, traditional gender roles, feminism, LGBTQ issues, psychology of happiness, technology's impact on culture. I'm interested in the way Maple and Vine addresses racial discrimination, especially as it pertains to Katha, Kathy, and Rue's marriage. I'm going to start typing words that represent that idea or theme into my search boxes. I also like to use the multiple search boxes to break my topic down into individual pieces. For example, I'm going to add Japanese Americans to the first search box and interracial marriage to the second box. You'll notice that as I type interracial, the database seems to be anticipating what I am looking for and offers suggestions. Be sure to review any suggestions before accepting them. Sometimes they are useful and sometimes they are not. In this case, I do actually like the interracial relationships or interracial marriage or interracial couple suggestion because it adds additional possibilities to my original idea of just interracial marriage. So I'm going to accept that suggestion. 
I want to stop for a minute and point out two things. One, when the database made suggestions for me, it placed the word or between each suggestion. Two, the word and seems to be the default between the search boxes themselves. These words are sort of like code that tells the database what to do with my search terms. The and tells the database that the terms in the first and second boxes must all appear in my search results, while the or tells the database those terms are synonyms or similar terms that sort of carry the same weight or meaning for my topic. So the sources the database offers me can have any of those, but likely won't have all. The first thing I notice is that I've got a little over 100 results. Not bad, assuming most are relevant to my topic. Let's take a closer look. As I skim the results, I'm paying attention to several things. First, I'm looking at the titles to get a feel for how relevant the results are. For example, I can see from the title that result number one is about marriage between Chinese and Japanese Americans, which I don't feel would be very helpful for my approach. On the other hand, the title of number three checks several boxes for me. It's clearly about marriage between Japanese or Japanese Americans and whites, and is even looking at a very relevant time period, the year surrounding World War II. Second, I'm paying attention to the subjects area of each result. The subjects area is essentially the keywords that tell me the aboutness of each result. I can also use these as inspiration for additional keywords or search terms that I didn't think of before, or that maybe didn't even know when I planned my original search. Basically, I can use these subjects to extend, refine, or limit my first search by adding them to, or trading them out for, some of my original search terms, depending on what they are and what I want to see happen to my results. For example, intermarriage is listed as a subject for several results. That seems to mean about the same thing as interracial marriage, so I can use OR to add it to the search box that contains those type of search terms. Now I've got about 250 results to look at. Let's skim again. The first four titles are ones I've already seen in my first search, three of which seem promising. The title of this fifth one doesn't tell me very much about the article, but the subjects seem relevant. Let's click on the title to learn more about the article. Looking at the abstract, which is basically a summary of the resource, I do think the article could be useful. I'm also curious about this last sentence. I don't know what anti-miscegenation laws are, but they seem to be connected to interracial marriage in some way. Let's open a new browser tab and Google anti-miscegenation laws to find out more. So anti-miscegenation or miscegenation laws reinforce segregation by making interracial marriage illegal. I think I'll add that idea to my search. Since those terms are specifically about interracial marriage, they hold the same sort of weight and I can add them to the interracial marriage search box with OR. That added a few additional results, putting us around 260. At this point, I would continue to skim through results and save any promising ones based on titles, subjects, and abstracts. While you're searching and skimming your own results, there are a couple of things I want you to note. For example, if we pay attention to the icon images next to each result, we'll see that our results aren't only academic journal articles. We are also getting reports, ebooks, and even something called periodicals, which are usually popular magazines or newspapers. You could limit your results to just scholarly, peer-reviewed academic materials by checking the box next to scholarly, peer-reviewed journals under limit two on the left side bar. However, you'll lose those newspaper articles and ebooks, which actually might be relevant to contextual research approaches. You can always check with your instructor or a librarian if you're uncertain about whether or not you should use a particular source. You should also notice that these left side options offer several additional ways to refine or limit your results, such as publication date. In this case, I actually don't want to do that. I want both older results to give time period context and newer results that examine things from our current perspective. Feel free to play around with these limiters in your own searches, and remember that you can always undo one if it doesn't work out. Remember how we added all of the EBSCOhost databases to our search? Here at the bottom, you can see which databases your sources are coming from. A lot of our sources are coming from Academic Search Ultimate, as well as America History and Life, and Source Index. Given what those databases cover and the nature of our topic, this makes sense. As you look closer at individual results, 
you'll see a variety of options for accessing the full text resources. For example, you often see either or both HTML full text and PDF full text. If you click on one of those options, you'll get immediate and free access to the entire article. PDF is preferred when given the option. If you click on an article's title, you gain access to a lot more information and options. We already know we can read abstracts after clicking on a title. On the right side of the screen, you'll see additional useful tools and options. For example, permalinks are links that will always bring me back to a source. I can email a source to myself, and I can even get a citation for a source in a variety of styles, including MLA. Just be mindful that these citations are not always perfect. You can copy and paste them onto your works cited page, but double check them against an MLA guide before submitting to your instructor. Going back to the results list, you will see some sources that don't seem to have HTML or PDF full text links. Instead, these sources have a fine full text link. What that means is that this particular source is not available in any of the databases that we're looking at. However, that Find Full Text link will do a quick look in other EKU Libraries owned resources. If we do not already have access to the source somewhere else, you'll get the option to ask us to request you a free copy from another library. Go ahead and do this. It's easy and usually quick. While you're searching, you may notice that this little Ask Us chat widget pops out periodically. If you get stuck on your keywords or your search terms, or you're just having a hard time finding what you need, you can use this pop out to chat with someone from EKU Libraries who can really dive in and figure out what's going on with your search terms. You can also make it pop out by clicking on the Ask Us tab on the right side of most EKU Libraries pages. In addition to databases, EKU Libraries also offers a broader library search. Let's go back to the library's homepage and try out that search. The broad library search is found right here in the middle of the library's homepage. This broad library search is essentially the best place to go if you're looking specifically for books, but it will also find you articles, ebooks, music and videos, streaming videos, DVDs, and much, much more. Because I really like the option of having multiple search boxes to break down my topic, I'm going to select the advanced search and do a slightly different search based on my earlier database only searches. The broad library search returned over 2,500 results. That's because this search is searching many of the databases we were searching before, plus several more, in addition to the broad library search. Here you're going to see that we're getting academic journal articles again, as well as ebooks, print books, and even video material. You'll likely want to refine this search quite a bit, which you can do by adding additional search terms with AND and or using the limiter options on the left side of the screen. Remember, you can always undo a limit or change that doesn't quite work for you. Much like in our earlier database searches, you'll see there are a variety of options for accessing full text, including PDF full text links, EPUB full text links, and even find full text links. Explore these options and note that sometimes it might take an extra click or two to get you to the actual full text. If you run into problems, use the Ask Us chat feature to request help. Finally, most ebooks will allow you to view a table of contents prior to jumping into the full text of the book. We recommend reviewing the table of contents or using the indexed or search within features of ebooks to discover which parts of the ebook are most relevant to you. No need to read the entire book. Remember, you can use the Ask Us pop out chat widget for help. Just look for the Ask Us tab on the right side of any EKU Libraries page. You can also go straight to our help services via the Get Help link at the top of EKU Libraries homepage, where you can access live chat and email reference services, or set up a Zoom research appointment with a librarian. Trina Napier is familiar with your course and assignment, but any librarian can help.